the Curse of La La Rona. We saw it. We got thoughts on it. Let's give our rating in three, two, one. Wait, wait for, for it. it. I'm surprised you gave it a wait for it. I mm-hmm. thought you liked it th- more. I did like it more, but it's still a wait for it. So for me, this movie is a tale of two halves. Uh, explain that in a second. Let's get into it. So The Curse of La La Rona. Let's uh, start with the things that we did like about this movie. It is a ghost story on a Hispanic folklore about La La Rona. I thought that the story itself was somewhat interesting. I liked how they set up the curse with the one woman in the beginning and then the twist on why it started to... Well, I don't know if it's really why it started to hunt or haunt Linda Cardellina's character, but I like the the twists with that relationship with the original woman that was being haunted by it and then Linda Cardellini. I thought that was a, a nice little twist in there. I thought the ghost itself was uh, pretty creepy. The acting all around, I actually liked quite a bit. Uh, what are some of the things that you liked about this film? I, I really liked all of the storytelling of the curse, and but I also think that I heard it before. Like the story itself, I didn't think was super original, but I really liked how it was laid out in the film and how it clung to the main family, the main character's family, and her acting i really liked her as an actor and i've never i don't think i've ever seen her in a horror film and so i thought that she was really really good Mm -hmm. what was her name linda cardellini linda cardellini and then her kid the kids that were in it were really good so that was like sometimes with movies that have kid actors in it like it's either a hit or a miss like either they're really good or you know it it takes you out of the movies but these kids kept you in it and Mm -hmm. when they were scared you were scared and i was like these are really good kid actors (laughs) yeah Uh, One of the other things I really liked is the cinematography was really good. Uh, It takes place in the 1970s, and as soon as the movie started, I mean, my first thought was that the production value was really high. It actually looked like it had the same similar cinematography that the Conjuring films have. And then actually to find out that it's actually part of the Conjuring universe was kind of fun, I guess. But it made sense when I saw what it looked like it was like oh it looks like it belongs in that universe of films yeah i mean that's what i really like about the conjuring franchises because they they all have um they they're parallel to each other in whatever way but also they visually look great and when they visually look spooky throughout the whole film it's it makes it a lot more interesting and i i've always been a fan of the conjuring films and that's i love horror movies but the conjuring films is still my favorite franchise but it's also a really big franchise right now. So they're like coming out with a lot of movies. Mm-hmm. Now the thing with, here's like where I say it's like a tale of two halves. The first half for me is like very visually interesting, but I was never scared by the stuff in the first half because they telegraph all the scares. Mm. So that was my issue with the first half that the camera moves and it leaves negative space within the frame and you're, my brain starts to go like, oh, some something should probably come out of that negative space. And more times than not, that's what happens. Mm-hmm. And it diminished the scares for me. But the visualness with the way the colors pop, with the reds, greens, and the blues, I thought was a very nice touch. Now, the second half actually picked up a lot for me. The second half, uh, when we actually got into more of the haunting within the house, and we got into the... Uh, he's not really a priest but he's someone that works outside of the church that used to be a priest. His name's Raphael. When he comes in, uh, he's a lot of fun Mm -hmm. in the film. And that's when it actually started to feel like a Conjuring film for me because the Conjuring films have sort of uh, a playfulness to them. There's some jokes, there's some laughs in them. And then Raphael feels like a character that came out of the Conjuring universe into here to add some levity to the situation. And because I wasn't being scared by the stuff in the first half, that when he came in, I started having a lot of fun with the film. Mm -hmm. And... In the second half, there were some genuinely creepy moments. One of my favorites is the scene when La La Rona's in the house, I think for I, like the second or third time, and Linda Carnalini's in the hall. She's looking at her two kids, and in the background, you see La La Rona standing in the hall adjacent oh, yeah. from Linda Carnalini. She goes into her room, and then when she goes into her room, she starts hearing the door creep, and then you see like the reflection of yeah. La La Rona. That was a great scene. That's one of the things that James Wan 
is a master of in his two kind dream films is that he's able to create this atmosphere it's just there's not many scenes like that in this film and that's the one that stood out for me yeah i think the reason i like the kind dream films is because there's always somebody who comes into the scenes of um the story or of the haunting because i think that's what i like about the conjuring movies is that the paranormal activity paranormal researchers come into the home and then that's how it's always been with the conjuring film is someone comes into the home to help get rid of the spirit which i know that's you know pretty popular in horror movies but like with this franchise they just seem to do it right and that's just something that i really seem to enjoy yeah they did a really good job with uh rafael and i almost mm-hmm. like looking back at it if he was the main character i he's a strong enough at least he's uh charismatic enough for me he could carry a film if they made a film of just him because he was fun uh he took it seriously with a sense of levity and his deadpan humor mm-hmm. really worked in the in the scenes that he was in. Yeah. So that's pretty much it for me. I liked the acting, the cinematography. It wasn't as scary as I wanted it to be, but the characters were interesting enough and I was actually somewhat invested in the relationship with the mom and kids and then Raphael really added a lot to it in the end. Yeah, I think that overall it was a really fun film to go see. I think the first half versus the second half is a, you got to get you got to truck through the first half to really get to the second half, which is where most of these scares come in. But that's kind of the universe. It seems to be how their movies are. But in other films, the first half, all the spooky scares are a little bit more scarier. This one's a little bit more calm. I mean, it didn't really scare me so much. And I I I thought La Lorena's. Um, Visually, I didn't think she was that scary. I thought it was a little bit almost too much makeup. Like, I I felt like I could see the white makeup or whatever they used to have her be look visually the way that she looked. But there is one scene where La Lorena like screamed, and that one was spooky to me. Other than that, I thought that she was scary, but she screamed a lot. I thought there was quite a few scenes. She screamed in the background, but there's one where she screams in front of the kids. She screams a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of screaming for I her. I mean, she screams and she cries, and that's her. The first one, the first it's... screaming scene, got the the audience we were with quite a bit. The one with the kids. The audience the... like were hilariously involved in this. Like they thought it was fun. Like they were in it for the ride. Like they yeah. just thought it was fun. Mm-hmm. I don't think they thought it was particularly scary. They did think it was scary, but yeah. I think they were there for the ride because they had a good time with it. Yeah, people clapped at the end of our screening. The audience liked it audience did like it i mean i liked it yeah i thought it was great it was also interesting that we don't get many horror films where the actual children are their tar are the targets uh that's something like it did it uh, what are you talking about all of the country movies are children all of the country movies get latched on to or revolve around children i mean they latch on to adults sometimes but for them a lot of times it's around it revolves around children Mm. The Conjuring 1, it was the mom who got latched on, but she was after her children. Conjuring 2, it was the children who was getting possessed by the old man. And then the old man was really possessed by a demon, and it was like this layered onion movie. And then all the animal movies, it has to do with the doll, but the dolls revolve around children. That's a good point. I didn't actually never even thought about it. I guess I just forget about some of these movies after I see them. I just like really like the movies. <laughs> Well, The Nun is the only one that wasn't, didn't have any children so far. I will say that if I was younger, say if I was like preteens and I saw this, I'd be scared out of my mind. This oh, This movie for sure. would like haunt yeah, me. I would love it. I would love it though. But <laughs> This would be the worst movie for me if I was younger. Mad Nightmares for a long time. I started getting into horror movies in middle school. And I think I remember seeing a lot of them in middle school and high school. So, I, I mean, I think this would have scared me, but I think I would have definitely seen it. <laughs> Yeah, when I was a kid, I, for whatever reason, would put on the occasional uh, 80s horror movie. Child's Play would always scare me. Friday the 13th with a hockey mask and a creepy music. This would Chucky. this would just wreck me. <laughs> but as an adult, it was okay. But anyways, those are my thoughts on the film. I don't have anything more to say. Those are my thoughts. Those are your thoughts. Okay, that's it for us. If you liked this show, like and subscribe to see more. 
the very next movie we are seeing is Avengers Endgame. This is it. This is it. So exciting. Was it 11 years of MCU films? Maybe 10, 10 years of MCU 10 years, films? 2008 to 2019. It started 11 in years. 2008. Or did it start before that because of Hulk? Hulk was first, right? Or was no, Iron Man? No, Iron Man. So 2008. This is... All right, so we're super excited for that. We got our we got our tickets for Thursday. Maybe we'll get a, uh, a review Thursday night. But definitely Friday. By Friday morning, we'll have one. So that's it. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And we'll see you next time, guys.